Anne to the brave frogs of Wartwood, Sasha to the strong toads in the tower, and Marcy to the wise newts of Newtopia. Winding up exactly where these three needed to be for the world to be saved. Was it destiny or sheer luck? What if things had come differently? The girls would definitely not be able to smile today. What if Anne was teleported to Toad Tower instead and Sasha was in Wartwood? When Anne opens her eyes, she finds herself in a jail cell, having already been caught by Captain Grime. After briefly being put in the picture about the world she is currently in, Grime immediately begins questioning her harshly. Where did she come from? And what is that strange music box she had with her? Anne refuses to comply with him because of his unpleasant and personality and outrageously rude behavior towards his subordinates. Luckily, Grime refrains from reporting Anne's presence as well as the obtainment of a music box to Andreas. Somehow, Anne can relate to the Toad Soldiers, having long been bossed around by Sasha, so she makes friends with many of them. However, unlike Sasha, she is not manipulative and does not even consider talking the soldiers into abandoning their posts, like Sasha did to bamboozle Grime. Because of that, Percy never leaves Toad Tower and doesn't attract the nearby herons, meaning that no chance occurs for Rand to change the situation she's in. More importantly even, without the heron attack, Grime does not become painfully aware of his flawed abilities as a leader and also doesn't gain a capable right hand. The Toad army stays the way it is, while Anne counts the days in her cell until Sasha comes to rescue her. Her. What is Sasha up to until that day finally arrives? After aimlessly wandering the wilderness for a while, Sasha is spotted by Wally and consequently encounters Sprig, who got caught in the trap that we assume Sasha has built too. Taking into account that Sasha is nowhere near as compassionate as Anne, she would actually have no problem leaving him to become Mantis fodder. Yet, she ends up saving him anyway because she is calculating and quite prudent. Thinking back to the past rough nights, she decides to rescue the frog boy, intending to get him to help her in return. Her plan is a success, as she one-shots the mantis and is allowed to stay with the planters. Still, despite spending so much time together, with one exception, they can't seem to warm up to each other. In Sasha's eyes, Sprig is plainly annoying, and Hapap is a bitter boomer. Of course, Sasha does not even try to get along with them in the first place, given her stubborn season 1 nature. Only Polly is bearable, for obvious reasons. A few weeks after the girl's arrival in Amphibia, Hapap fails to become the Valley's mayor, but sparks a rebellion without being aware of it. Not tolerating this kind of disobedience, Grime schemes to get rid of Hapap. Without a sharp gal like Sasha though, the Toad army can't possibly come up with a plan as clever as to deceive the villagers of Wartwood. Thus, they simply march to Wartwood head on to collect a good beating from the Wartwoodians. We all know the villagers are surprisingly tough. The unorganized wimpy toads stand no chance and flee for their lives, abandoning Grime who will later be branded as a traitor. For now, Grime retreats to the shadows. But without Sasha there to lift him out of his depression, he is overwhelmed by General Yune. Therefore, his part in the story is already over. Fortunately, Grime was one arrogant toad, believing the clearly inferior frog villagers would not pose a challenge to his army, he provokingly let Sasha know he has Anne rotting in jail. Obviously, she beat his attitude out of him and either took the calamity box directly from him or obtained it later when she went to pick up Anne. This video is an installment of the Amphibia What If series, dealing with the question what the show would have been like if the girls had arrived in different places. Stick around until the end of the video to find out which what if is coming next. At this point, the biggest contrast to the canon timeline is that Anne and Sasha's relationship has not taken a turn for the worse or the better. And so, nothing worth mentioning comes to pass until the seasons change and the girls are ready to leave the valley.
Theoretically, the planters would have little reason to accompany them, taking into consideration that Anne and Sasha's bond to them is almost non-existent. But they know the girls would probably just meet their death on the way to Newtopia, and can't bring it over them to let the two go like this. Apart from that, Hop Hop has not buried the Calamity Box, because due to the shallow relationship with the girls, the box was never even brought up. Though admittedly, after the rain never had a truly substantial effect on the main plot in the first place. So it doesn't even matter whether the planters know about the box or not. We skip forward to the party arriving in Newtopia and reuniting with Marcy, all in good spirits. No conflict between anyone in sight. Just like in the original timeline, Andreas carefully steers the entire situation towards the temple missions. The first one is cleared. The second, however, may look slightly different from the canon one. Originally, while Valeriana is recharging the blue gem, Anne hurries back to the planters and Marcy because she heard them screaming. As a consequence, a part of the calamity power still resided inside of Anne. This time around, I imagine Anne would at least be able to wait until the stone finishes charging. In regard of the fact that she knows Sasha is present and perfectly capable of protecting everyone. Just like that, that Anne's entire calamity power is gone. I'll also explain in a minute why her still having the powers would not change the outcome. The third temple mission is completed. None of the girls have cool anime powers that would really help them right now. They are defenseless against Andreas, who kills off Anne, Sasha and the planters, only sparring Marcy to have her become the core's vessel. There is not even a revolution that could have posed at least a a minor hindrance for Andreas. Everything, absolutely everything, went according to his plans, will continue to go his way. And that's how the show ends. Now, even if we consider Anne had still decided to break off the charging, the final outcome will be the same. The one and only reason Anne's powers suddenly reached their full potential in two colors was her unbelievably deep emotional connection to Sprig. While traveling, they may have become close to in this reality, but it was simply impossible for their relation to grow to a similar level as in the canon timeline in the short time they spent together. No matter how cruel this might sound, Sprig's death would not trigger Anne the way it did in the original timeline. In this reality, some things took a desirable turn. On one hand, Anne and Sasha never had a falling out, although Marcy's betrayal still took place. On the other hand, the show lost many of the things that make it so wonderful. Anne and Spriggs, as well as Grime and Sasha's friendship, are not existent. Above all, if this was the real story of Amphibia, we would have never gotten to see the girls going home and being happy again. Somehow, knowing the alternatives are worse makes me feel better about all the awful stuff that happened in the show. It does have a nice ring to it too. Everything was predestined, foretold in the prophecy of the three stars burning bright.